Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, and by the way, uh, thank you for everybody who's uh, checked out the crazy experiments I do. You're absolutely right. When I change the, the theme music around, it is kind of trolling. It, well, I don't have trolling. It's just I'm 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 having fun with it, and definitely people send me things from time to time, and and I tend to use them whenever I can, and uh, that's that's very cool. It's very cool when people do things like that. So I'll continue to kind of bounce around a bit. It's not meant to be serious. Uh, people send me uh, comments to my channel from time to time, like uh, you need to get more serious about your channel. I'm like that's that's not the it's not the point of the channel. I'm not uh, trying to be a big YouTuber. I still don't understand why I have the subs I do. It's very nice. Uh, some of you uh, enjoy the, uh, the the silliness, I guess, uh, like me. But anyway, we're looking into some viewer mail here. And uh, here is a uh, mail from somebody in Brazil. And uh, it, this is um, talking a little bit about cancel culture and kind of what's going on. So checking in from South America, we get uh, Hi Perch. I'm a big fan of your YouTube channel here from Brazil. Longtime viewer. Only recently commented about the Joe Bennett case. Joe Bennett case being uh, Joe Bennett, the artist uh, who was on the Immortal Hulk, had um, <clears throat> done a political cartoon. Well, there had been some other things. There had been this... Um, um, maybe accidental, didn't feel accidental. I mean, just, just for what it's worth, um, this kind of a Jewish jab in the, um, uh, the immortal Hulk. And then, then separate from that, uh, some old political cartoons got kind of unearthed that honestly, um, I don't know. I, I, I look at political cartoons today in the U S and you've got, you know, people's heads severed off. You've got, you got really harsh stuff against Biden and before Biden Trump. I mean, you know, you, you've got, images of both of them as corpse murdering people and everything else. So I, I look at this political cartoon from Brazil and it's like, I mean, it feels like a political cartoon, but it, but it was enough to get him uh, canceled from Marvel for allowing to walk away from him. But anyway, that's, that's kind of when it went on. If you missed the Joe Bennett case, um, but the mail continues. I don't know if you'll be interested in the subject, but we're living in a big cancel culture case here in Brazil because of Tom Taylor's Superman. Okay, that's surprising to me. Uh, a gold medal winner, male volleyball player, commented on his Instagram page about that issue. He said, they say it's only a cartoon, no big deal. You will see where this takes us. I'm adapting to make sure the meaning doesn't get lost in translation. Um, well, he's been canceled by Brazilian mainstream media for being homophobic and racist. Racist? Um, hmm. Okay, I don't get the racist part, but... Maybe, well, I mean, I guess if John Kent's from another planet, that's a different race. I mean, in theory, but uh, okay. Um, anyway, he's been canceled as homophobic and racist because of these words. He's got fired from his volleyball team and is not being called again for the national team. Volleyball is the second most popular sport in Brazil, especially on beaches. Am I right? Huh? I, I, sorry. Second to soccer by a great margin. Well, of course. Um and, uh, and this player had 200,000 followers account on Instagram, but now that's clear. He's being a victim to cancel culture. His Instagram account has over 1.5 million followers just a couple days after that's interesting. So that that's very interesting. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Brazil is traditionally a very Catholic and Christian country, but nowadays you can't say your opinion about Superman without losing your job. That's how big a woke comic from an American author. I think it's an Australian author actually can get here, one hemisphere afar from the U.S. Cool. Uh, well, thank you for the um, the mail. Uh, this is a real story. I went and checked it out, and um, the uh, the professional volleyball uh, player is uh, Mariko Sousa, and he's uh, 33. He's apparently a uh, a legend, uh, multiple championships, medals to his fame, um, and basically, uh, the story is as was described. Um, the, uh, this, this article listed as, oh, it is just a drawing. It's no big deal. Go on and we'll see where we end up. And then they shared the, uh, the picture of the kiss, uh, that that's been seen with uh, Tom Taylor's, um, uh, comic. Um, and then he refused to back down after fans and sponsors. Um, and then apparently it said he gave a forced half-hearted apology before he was let go by the team. Um, He's listed as being one of the best volleyball players over the years, dominant and posing figure, crucial role in the 2016 Summer Olympics, uh, came back from an injury, uh, an injury in a dramatic fashion in order to help uh, win the game. Um, okay, so uh, basically the extra piece of drama here is another person on the team, Douglas Sousa, uh, who is not related to him, even though they share the same last name, is a uh, out gay Brazilian volleyball star, and he took offense to the post 
And apparently there was a bit of a brawl between the two, um, you know, talking about how he didn't go straight seeing male superheroes kissing women and and uh, kind of uh, back and forth. And then a couple other teammates apparently complained that uh, Mariko is homophobic, prejudiced, possibly racist, cowardly and bad tempered. Um, so anyway, then um, apparently after he was let go, he continued to post images of like Superman kissing women. Uh, apparently so anyway there 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 you have it but that's that is kind of the that is the story so I, what do we what what to make of all this so one little bit in the the mail that i wanted to call out was uh the, and I, I i'm not going to look uh, but let's just assume this is accurate we you know I, we can see for ourselves the player had two hundred thousand followers on instagram after the cancellation which apparently after his uh, termination from the team now the Instagram account has 1.5 million followers. What does that tell us? Well, to some extent, it tells us that more and more people are flocking to social media, I think because of wanting to be part of, of the culture war. Um, it's interesting, though, because I've often equated the culture war and politics as feeling too much like sports. It uh, you, you think about the rivalry between, say, uh, you know, the Denver Broncos and the, uh, the Oakland Raiders, which was a big rivalry for a while in the 80s and 90s. And uh, the teams would, would, you know, throw insults at each other. They were fiercely loyal to their teams and everything else. Um, and you just see them kind of constantly talk about it. And that's how politics feels these days. It doesn't necessarily feel rational. It doesn't feel like people are describing the issues or anything else. It feels like, you know, like a football team. That's what it reminds me of. And now everything is that way. Uh, ideology and social media accounts and everything else, it feels more like dunking on each other. And it's filled with hypocrisy, just like sports teams were. One of the most notable parts about the Broncos Raiders rivalry that you that you know got called out several times is that both teams would cheat. But whenever the other team cheated, it was an outrage. How could they get away with this? My God, the ref, what are they doing? But when they cheated, it's like, oh, this is no big deal. Why are they even focusing on this? It shouldn't even be a rule. I remember watching uh, Bronco football games with friends. And the Broncos would, uh, you know, Elway would do something and, and, and there would be, it would be blatant uh, violation of the rules. And the, uh, the Bronco fans are like, that even shouldn't be a rule. I thought I'd said it, but people should just let them play football. But then the Raiders would do that. And the Raiders were a dirty team in a lot of ways. But uh, it, it was always very comical to me to see kind of this, you know, in the moment, like five minutes later, complete hypocrisy. And that's what a lot of this feels like to me. But what's interesting about this follower count and everything else is you're seeing more and more people gravitate to people. Now, you know, politics and ideology is more entertaining on social media than sports. And I think, you know, to a lesser, to, well, not just to a lesser, to, to a greater extent, comic books falls into that too. And as I read through this mail and I look at some of this stuff, it just strikes me of how many people are, are into the comics for the comics, for the story, including this John Kent story. How many people are interested to actually see where this thing goes with Jay Nakamura or how many people are interested in it because it owns the conservatives or vice versa, they want to see the train wreck. I, I think that comics is in this bad place right now where a, a greater amount of the attention, and I'm not saying money because I don't think a lot of these people are buying the comics. The attention is uh, is focused on these issues. It's focused on, on what's going on with behind the scenes, not actually in the comic. And people are kind of rooting for or hating on comics based on the surface traits, and now the comics are starting to cater to that, where they are all about the surface traits. I, I, I said it in the other video. I mean, I hope that somewhere along the way, uh, this uh, John Kent story actually develops into a story. Like there's some interesting twists and turns or whatever. I, I still think the obvious one is Nakamura. Uh, Jay turns out to be a villain, and Superman gets his heart broken in a weird way. Has to go crying back to Saturn Girl, uh, who apparently, who he's cheating on right now. I mean, isn't he? I, I don't think they broke up, but ah, whatever. Um, anyway, it, it, uh, that kind of stuff, it, it feels like a very distant priority. And I do think it's weird. Um, now, granted, this, this volleyball story, apparently there was strife on the team and everything else, but it is a crazy to me that Brazil, South America, um, a, a volleyball player who had, I mean, you look the guy up. He is a, a very celebrated player. Very, uh, it was considered the hero of the Olympics in 2016 for the team coming back from an injury and, um, to be, uh, to, to, for a, a part, you know, cause obviously there's some other things probably in here, but for a good part of his uh, termination for the team, 
being Tom Taylor Superman. It's nuts. I, I mean, how crazy is that of <laughs> a side effect of this story that uh, this this super the Superman son of John Kent or son of Cal? Like, God damn it! Why do why do they not just call it Superboy? Anyway, um, no, it's it's nuts. And I, I don't know what the other statements are. The articles kind of allude to there's been other statements, but the statement everybody keeps printing is pretty benign. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry. You say it's only a cartoon, no big deal. You see where this will take us. I mean, okay. But maybe it's just me again that I'm old. But sports athletes say crazy shit all the time. Like, I, I mean, crazy stuff for, for decades. Uh, athletes have said stuff. And by the by large, everybody just kind of ignores them or laughs it off because nobody pays attention to what they're saying anyway. They're interested in what they do out on the field. Um, I'm not saying it makes it all fine. It just It's interesting how we're, we're zeroing in on this and how all this world is collapsed into this uh you know, this, this outrage, cancel culture, polarization stuff. It's pretty crazy, but, but there you go. In case you didn't know it, uh, big, big Olympic volleyball star getting uh, cut from the team and removed for not liking the Tom Taylor, uh, uh, Superman moment of John Kent. And in the process, um, you know, six X, uh, growing his Instagram account. So now, <laughs> Hey, I, this is, again, Still boggles my mind. A uh, Olympic superstar um, goes from 200,000 followers to 1.5 million followers. And the growth is because he objected to Superman. What is that? I mean, God, that first of all, it tells us that this is not that simple. And the people who keep describing this as, ah, there's a couple angry you know, people out there who can't accept progress. It's, it's, not, it's not a couple angry people out there. This is a very divided, divided as in in half kind of world right now. Uh, but absolutely crazy, you know. Yeah, you, you think you're popular because of being a Olympic superstar, but it, it turns out uh, statements on Superboy is going to give you more attention. I, I don't know what to say. Thank you very much for writing this mail. Good to hear a little bit about what's going on in another part of the world. And uh, all of you, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for listening. <laughs>